Good day everyone, it's Waifu Belector and our subject for this video is going to be PlayStation and in this video I'll go over some things that I've already spoken about and some things that we haven't but all of it will hopefully total up to some meaningful insight into what we could likely expect from PlayStation in the not extremely distant future. So if you end up liking the video, remember to give a like. I really do appreciate it and subscribe for more video game videos every week. But OK. Let's get right into this. Now at the time of this recording we are almost three years into the current PS5 generation and we're only now beginning to more firmly plant our feet in the current gen and leave last gen behind. Of course some of that is due to the pandemic but regardless of that setback the wheels have started to turn again and exciting plans for the current generation can resume. And that's what I want to look at. What are those plans for the current generation? Specifically what are Sony's plans going forward and what games are they working on? Because you look at Xbox and the plan there is a lot more clear or at least I believe it to be. Xbox's plan is Game Pass. It's to buy up as many game publishers of value as they can and place heavy hitting content on Game Pass and essentially become this indispensable bargain of a gaming hub. A gaming hub that can also stream games from devices that aren't Xboxes. Microsoft and Xbox are pretty steadily and openly walking down that path. But what PlayStation and Sony plan to do in response has been a little less clear. However, through a lot of hints and slowly trickling details, we are able to piece together some semblance of a plan, the bulk of which centers around PlayStation's imminent splash into multiplayer. I'll try to make this quick because I have spoken about it, but you see, over the past couple of years, PlayStation has been setting up its chess pieces in such a way that they can make a strong push into the multiplayer arena. One of the moves they made was purchasing Bungie, the developers behind Destiny 2. When PlayStation did this, it was made clear that Destiny would remain on other platforms and that Bungie would maintain its day-to-day -day operational independence. So then the question became, why buy them at all? But the answer was simple, for the talent. Specifically, the talent in establishing and maintaining high quality internet infrastructure and netcode, something the folks at Bungie have a reputation for sort of being the best at. Also, Destiny 2 has been out for a long time now, and it doesn't seem like it'll be going away anytime soon if it doesn't want to. So those Bungie people probably have a good idea of how to sustain a game with longevity as well. And not too long after the Bungie acquisition, it was revealed that PlayStation hired a man named Anders Howard who is quietly responsible for modern Fortnite battle pass structuring and progression. And that same man will be the head of monetization for Naughty Dog's upcoming multiplayer game set in the world of The Last of Us. And if you aren't familiar with Fortnite monetization and progression, I'll make it simple. It's easily the most generous and most fun of the live service games. So hiring someone so instrumental in that is not a small thing. So where we are now is that PlayStation has hired all the best talent you possibly can for making a live service game and then attach that multiplayer idea to their most popular IP. But it didn't stop there because soon after it was revealed that PlayStation's Horizon franchise would also be receiving a multiplayer standalone. And it's the carefulness of these hirings and acquisitions, the safety of using established IP, all of this is reflective of a plan for PlayStation to solidify its footing in the multiplayer space. But why is this their plan? How could just jumping in the multiplayer space combat the big money Microsoft plan? Well, as you've likely already noticed, PlayStation over the past decade or so has made themselves entirely unfuckwittable, for lack of a better term, when it comes to single player games. Being a fan of single player games and not having a PlayStation makes about as much sense as eating a Twinkie without the filling. Sure, you've got a Twinkie, but you're missing the best part. 
<laughs> and it's because of that single player reputation that PlayStation continues to earn its keep in the eyes of fans as an invaluable provider of games. But there's no telling if that will always be enough, especially with Microsoft making such big moves. And so PlayStation plans to attempt to gain the same reputation they have in single player, but for multiplayer. Because just imagine, if in another 10 years, PlayStation has built up a multiplayer franchise that rivals Call of Duty in popularity, with the addition that it's only available on PlayStation hardware. That, along with the accolades they already have in single player content, would make them fucking indestructible in the gaming industry. They'd be virtually impossible to surpass at that point. So I think that multiplayer is the crux of their plan. But for that plan to work, you still have to maintain your single player dominance as you build the multiplayer side of things. With that in mind, we know that on the multiplayer side of things, we've got standalone spinoffs of both The Last of Us and the Horizon franchises coming. Maybe even Bungie is working on something new. But what first party content is coming for single player? I mean, outside of the things that we already know are coming, like Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. And if we're looking for lesser known projects in the works, it only makes sense that we'd start with some of the lesser acclaimed studios, like Team Asobi. Team Asobi is responsible for the Astrobot games, the Astrobot Rescue Mission VR game, and Astro's Playroom that pack-in game that comes free on every PS5. And it was confirmed by Team Asobi that they are working on what will be their biggest game yet, which leads me to believe that it'll be a full-scale traditional TV game and not another VR game or glorified demo to showcase new hardware. Additionally, you also have Bluepoint games, most well known for their remakes of Shadow of the Colossus and Demon Souls. And industry insider Millie Amand revealed that Bluepoint Games is in fact working on two new projects, with one being an entirely original game that would be similar in scale to Spider-Man Miles Morales. The other game that Bluepoint is working on is said to be a remake of a beloved game. But what that beloved game is, is anyone's guess. But Team Asobi and Bluepoint are on the smaller side hype-wise when it comes to PlayStation. The games they churn out alongside studios like Housemark with whatever follow-up to Returnal they'll deliver, all those games, while not small potatoes, will be decidedly smaller potatoes in comparison to the big boys. And so we come to what big boys can we possibly look forward to? After all, it is those big games that are going to allow PlayStation to remain a titan of single player. Well, like I said, we've got a big one in Spider-Man 2 coming later this year. Then there's the Wolverine game, but that'll be 2024, 2025. And both games are, of course, developed by Insomniac Games. But what about Sucker Punch, who has been mysteriously quiet for quite a while at this point? The last time we heard from them was Ghost of Tsushima in 2020. And after a success like that, of course, PlayStation would love another game from Sucker Punch, and it's more than likely going to be Ghost of Tsushima 2 which I assume is in the works and I have no doubt will be great, but there's also the possibility of a reboot to the infamous franchise, or hell, why not even both? If Insomniac could do Spider-Man and Wolverine, why can't Sucker Punch give us Ghost of Tsushima and Infamous? <laughs> but in all seriousness, I have no reason to believe there's more Infamous coming. That's just wishful thinking. But a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima, whether it comes sooner or later, you can count on it will eventually be coming. And as I recently spoke about, Naughty Dog has chosen their next single player game that will come after the multiplayer game. I'll link the video where I go more in depth about that at the end of this video. And there's no telling what Sony Santa Monica is working on. Fresh off of the release of God of War Ragnarok, the most we have on them is that the Santa Monica devs are quote, spread out on a lot of different things. And I'll also link the video where I talk about that more in depth at the end of this video. But yes, either way, all these things considered, I just think overall the future of PlayStation and really gaming in general 
general is looking very exciting a lot of stuff to get hype about but that's just what i think let me know what you think do you want to see playstation get more into first party multiplayer or do you think it'll hurt the good stuff we have in single player or maybe you think multiplayer isn't sony's plan maybe you think they have a different plan i'd love to hear what you think that is let me know whatever your thoughts are and please remember to like and or subscribe i really do appreciate it but until next time i am waifu belector i am just a normal guy i like hentai and i want reboots of kill zone and resistance goodbye